Hi friends, welcome back to the Goose and Ghost Knitting Podcast. My name is Ashley. I am the maker and designer behind Goose and Ghost Knits, and I'm coming to you today for the first time in the new location. Um, I told you in my last episode that my fiance and I were moving, and here we are. Um, this is our new location for a little bit. Um, we've moved back in with my parents for a little bit, I don't know how long, while we're transitioning to something new. What is that something new? I don't know. We're figuring it out. But my parents have this really beautiful, lovely back deck and I thought that would be really nice to come film out here today. And I feel like it's just making me look even more pale than I am. So that's great, but it's really beautiful out here and it's warm. So I thought that this would be a nice place to come. So I have a lot to show you guys because I missed out on my last episode. Um, it's been a month since I last recorded and there's been a lot going on. And it's been either also there's a highway behind their house so there may be some highway noise i don't know how much of it is going to pop up but there's no more industrial noises like there was at my last home so highway industrial i i personally will take the highway but whatever um so we'll talk about two pattern releases that have come out since my last episode. I've got two FOs, um, a couple of whips, and a couple of acquisitions. Not much, but there's, I mean, it's been a month since I last recorded. Things are going to happen. So we'll start first with the, the new patterns that have come out. Um, and we'll start with, we'll go in order of when they came out. So the first one that came out was here. These are the succulent sucks. I've done this every, like every time I say the name of this pattern. These are the succulent socks. These were done in collaboration with Urnaceous Fibers for her quarterly sock club. And I did a design for the spring, spring club. And of course, like this yarn is such a beautiful, sagey, beautiful green color. I love green, it's my favorite color. And it was just screaming at me, leaves, botanicals, beautiful, natural vegetation. So figure out how to do these fun, leaves all the way down the front panel of the sock and it's flanked by cables going towards the the leaf design and then the sock the sock kit that it came with um had two minis it had this beautiful like white and this beautiful rusty pink as many so these came in 20 gram minis with the the 100 gram skein as well this pattern is available for purchase um, I will have it linked down below so if you missed out on the sock club even though I was promoting it so much and you can still sign up for the summer sock club from her because it is quarterly so she comes out with one every four four months I think once a quarter, so that's four months, right? Um, you could, of course, still sign up for the, the summer quarter. Um, but you can buy the, the pattern individually, and I'm a little bit biased, but I certainly recommend that you do. So that was pattern number one that came out, was the Succulent Socks. And, of course, I have all of my patterns on both Etsy and Ravelry, so if you are um, somebody who is not a Ravelry user, they are available and hopefully accessible as much as possible. Then the next pattern that came out a whole week later, I really stacked this up on myself and nailed it, was the Alkai Shawl. Let's 
see if I can lean back all the way to put it in frame. So it's a very easy DK weight shawl using alternating eyelets and garter stitch. And then along the whole bottom in lace weight, I used a mohair. You can of course use any kind of lace weight yarn that you want. It's a very simple feathered fan wavy little border. And it's just an asymmetric triangle. And it's beautiful and it's fun and it's really great for beginners because it combines beginner stitches. I've made a chart in the pattern that you can just check off as you make every increase. And it just makes it like easy, I guess. Um, but for anybody who is a little bit more of an advanced knitter, it is a great mindless project because you are doing very simple, basic stitches. But it has, you know, it switches it up every now and then, so it still has a little bit of interest. So, this is the Alkai Shawl. And both of these are available now, linked down below. And as it happens to be, with all of my pattern releases, I do a giveaway for the patterns. Because it's been, I have two this time, I'm just going to do a, a pattern giveaway for the Succulent Socks next time. And on the next episode, I'll do a pattern giveaway for the Alki Shawl. So if you would like to win a copy of the Alki Socks, if you would like to win a copy of the Succulent Socks, Leave a comment down below and subscribe and I will be picking someone at random in the next episode to win a copy. In the next episode, we'll do the same with the Alki Shawl. So these are both out now, the Succulent Socks and the Alki Shawl, link down below. I hope you'll go check them out and enjoy. And of course, I hope you enter the giveaway too. So let's get started. I have two FOs to show you. Um, one of them is kind of an FO, so we'll start with the one that's like an actual, I'm done. I just need to block it. Um, and then it's really done. But my Kraken cowl is done. You can see like it's all wavy. The color work is, is a little all over the place. But this is what we've got going on here. Um, you can see the marker right here. I did all of that since the last episode and finished it. And then for the eyes here, I didn't really feel like doing three stranded color work. So what I did instead was duplicate stitch the red on all three, one, two, three of the Kraken, um, all over his eyes. To get that good Seattle Kraken vibe going on. Um, if you don't know, I am a huge fan of the Seattle Kraken. Uh, they are my favorite hockey team. They are my favorite NHL team. And so I really wanted to make this. I started it during their playoff run, and unfortunately, I didn't finish it in time for when they got eliminated. But that's okay. I'll have it ready to go for next season. It'll be really great to wear for games. Even though, you know, the arena really isn't all that cold. But there's an event going on next season called the Winter Classic. That's an outdoor game. And it's on New Year's Day on January 1st that the Kraken are playing in. In Seattle. So this might be a good accessory to wear to an outdoor game. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. Tickets went on sale this morning and they're expensive. So I don't know if I'll be able to go. It would be really fun though. So this is done and it's getting, gonna get blocked and then put away for the fall because I think it's 80 degrees outside right now. And there's no point in me wearing a wool cowl. Um, 
I didn't talk about the yarn. I used Knit Pick Swish for all three colors. Uh, DK. The red is Habanero. The light blue is Wonderland Heather. And the navy is Mimic. I'll have it down below in the description if you want to copy me. I can't remember off the top of my head and um, most of all of our belongings are still in block boxes and I couldn't find my notebook to write all my notes in that I normally do. So I'm running on the seat of my pants today. I am struggling. I am not happy that I can't find most of what we own. Um, I'll talk about it more later, but I love moving so much. I love moving. If I keep telling myself that, I'll be convinced of it. Maybe. Because I know that we're going to have to move again sometime in the next couple months. Alright, so shall we talk about the next kind of FO? But let's do a little hold we'll your back moment. And I'm back. And I'm wearing something new that I talked about casting on in my last episode. And I did in that week that we were moving. Just because, you know, I like to make my life complicated to cast on a design that I've never made something in this kind of construction before. The week that I'm moving and everything's complicated in life but I did and it's actually the perfect distraction for everything going on and I finished it really quickly so let's talk about this this is my tank top design that I'm hoping I can get out very soon um, I have to grade and get it to a tech editor and then I'll have a testing call and I'm hoping to have it out by August I want it out before Flock Fiber Festival, that's my goal. But this is the Salish Sea Tank. See, look at how cute this is. It's a little bit cropped. We've got a V-neck that, we've got a cable that starts down on the ribbing and goes all the way up and along the V the cable follows and get close here so you can see the cable goes all the way up the straps which is, I thought was so cute and this was something that I really wanted to make a goal of mine for tank tops because I know my bustier girls have this issue as well I have a big bust compared to my under bust and it makes life complicated with tank tops wanted to make sure the strap wasn't thin. As you can see, I have a pretty thick bra strap because I have a big chest. It covers, it is the same thickness as that bra strap. So, I knit this in Lion Brand Kobu. The color is denim. And I have some edits that need to happen before I can get it graded and sent to a tech editor. Um, I very stupidly, when I was swatching, didn't measure my swatch before and after the swatch was complete. I just had it, I just measured it after my swatch was completed, or after my it was blocked. So I didn't know how much the fabric would grow. So as you can see here, on the underbust, this is, or on the side, this is a lot bigger than I was hoping it would be. And the strap in the back is really, really long. So it grew, it grew a lot. So I need to take off a bunch, probably like this much the 
this much of the strap, probably like four inches to kind of compensate for um, the extra length that it grew during blocking. Um, but it's, it feels really nice otherwise. And I'm really happy with the overall result. It's really comfortable and it's a good, for me, I, I'm really proud of it. It's a good summer piece. And of course I will have, I'm wearing it cropped right now because I wanted a good summer crop top um, pattern. But I will have instructions in the pattern as well for a full length in addition to the crop top. So let's talk about the construction a little bit. It is unfortunately bottom up. Um, I didn't want to, when I started it, I was like in the midst of moving and really couldn't comprehend starting here with the increases and decrease. It would have been increases if I was going top down. So I started bottom up so that I could do all the easy stuff first. And by the time that I got to here, where everything separated and went up, I had the brain capacity to, to address the, the more complicated. And even this isn't really all that complicated, it was just new. So it was, move this just a little bit. Um, it was fun. It was really fun. Um, I ended up doing this in the midst of moving and all of the chaoticness of that um, and designing it from scratch. I cast it on and cast it off in nine days. So I'm hoping to do another version of it and I'm really excited to see how quickly version two will knit up when I'm not moving and making life complicated and chaotic and when I already have a pattern written down. So I will bring updates in the next episode with how the few changes that I need to make go, but I am excited and I really like it. So this is the Salish Sea Tank. It is not ready for testing yet, but fingers crossed by the next episode, it will be ready for testing. Fingers crossed. And of course I'll talk to y'all all about it when it's ready for testing. I'm so excited. I really love it. Okay. So that's all that I've got for whips or no FOs. Those are all my FOs. I've got this and the crack and cowl. Let's talk about whips. I have four sitting here, two old and two new one. I started yesterday. So let's go from, we'll start here. I was been working on my wedding shawl. Some stitches came off the needles. I've been working on my wedding shawl. So if you don't know, I am getting married in January. My weight just got really loud a bunch of cars and trucks coming past. Uh, I'm getting married in January. And you know, it's gonna be chilly. It's gonna be a little cold. So um, I decided I'm going to make a, a shawl for any of those times where we have to be outside and taking pictures. Um, and hopefully it's not gonna be that much, but we are going to be taking outside pictures. So I decided to make a shawl just to have something a little warm, a little cozy. And I've knit from here up. Not a whole lot, but a couple of repeats. This is really nothing exciting right now. It is just seed stitch forever and ever. Um, this is going to be the Poet Shawl by Sari Nordland. And um, I'm doing this in a DK weight yarn, Knit Picks. Capra. Which one's the DK and which one's the fingering? I threw out the ball band. But the DK weight one that has the cashmere in it. I think it's Capra. In the color Hemlock Heather. Um, and right now, it is a fingering weight 
design shawl so I am doing it in a DK weight just to make it a little bit warmer. Um, I don't know how big it's going to end up being because I'm deviating. Um, and this needle size I'm using for that then because I'm deviating is a US 5 which is 3.75 millimeter. So this is going to be the color my bride's bridal party is wearing. And I thought it'd be kind of cute to match. And green, like I said, green is my favorite color. So I'll be more inclined to wear this color after the wedding than I will white. So, worked on that for a little bit. Um, next up, I finished the first sock of my non Christmassy Santa Sor socks. This is what they look like. This was another pattern that I put out in collaboration with Urinaceous Fibers on Christmas Eve for her Christmas Eve cast on box. Um, and the original pattern has some color work up here with bobbles in the contrasting colors. And I really just wanted to see what would happen when I took just the texture pattern that's all over the rest of the sock and just did an all over texture sock. So it's a variation on a uh, broken rib all over. And of course, as I always do, I ended with a contrast toe because that is my absolute favorite is to have a contrast toe. Um, the yarn that I'm using is Yarnaceous Persalto Fingering, always, in the color Mummy's Very Angry. And the toe is from Hobby. I don't know. May Mayflower, I think, is the name of the, the yarn. I don't know what color it is. It'll be down in the description. <laughs> so I actually really wanted to do the toe in a complete break of character. I wanted to do it in hot pink. I don't do hot pink <laughs> ever. Um, but the only hot pink that I own is was a gifted mini skein from my friend Emily of Crochet Creations who I had won a giveaway with um, for her 600 subscribers and I wanted to keep the mini skein and the main skein together to make something together. So I landed with this blue and I still think it's really pretty. So I had started the second sock, got a decent way through the foot or through the leg until I noticed something, like normal, Ashley messed something up. Way to go. Um, let's see, can you see how long the cuff is on each sock? This one's 15 rows. This one's 20. I gotta go back and rip out all of this back to 15 rows of cuff. So I've been avoiding it. I've been avoiding it. It's It's been too depressing for me. So I just haven't done it. Um, but I'm hoping I can finish it soon. I just have to rip back the sock, which I don't want to do. It's so sad. All right. Next up, I've got something that I've been saying I'm going to cast on for months. It's been my goal several times over the last couple months to cast on this, but I finally did it. I finally cast on my blanket with my Disney Parks Club from Fangirl Fibers. And I'm going to be doing this as a block, like each month is a block. Um, each like three blocks for each month I think and so then three times 12 is gonna be 36 so I'll have a 36 block blanket that hopefully by the end of the year it just needs to be seamed together but I was hoping to do this like 
as the yarns are coming in every month. And it's June, and I've just started January. So, that's great. Going great. So, I started with January. This is Fangirl Fibers Disney Parks Club. Parks, uh, Disney Parks Attractions Club. Um, I get it on her fingering weight base, which is an 80-20. And this is January, which is It's a Small World. And here is block one. So it's gonna be a square. Um, and it starts in the inside and grows outward and has this really cute little lace pattern all over and I really wanted to finish block one before I podcasted but I noticed something in the pattern that I hadn't been anticipating so I put it down for a couple days and like a little bit of frustration a little bit of oh no what am I gonna do I don't have yarn for it so you're supposed to have each block bordered by a couple rows of garter stitch in the main like the, the color that's connecting all of the blocks oh the pattern that i'm using by the way is um not the one that i had originally intended to use I was originally going to use the star flower from tin can knits and then i just decided i didn't love it as much so i started looking around for other blanket block patterns um so i'm using i'm doing from grandma with love by melanie berg so let's see can i pull up okay so see this picture here here's the one in progress and you can see each block has a little bit of a border it has that gray border so um, I don't have a yarn to do a border with I really wanted to keep it to exclusively yarns from this club with just having the connecting color be different so I wasn't intending to have the connecting color um be a part of each of the block and i'm just sitting here purling on it while i'm talking about it but and and part of me was like you know what it doesn't matter i just won't do it i'll just keep going to the edge of the block with just the the club color the main color for each block um but then I started looking through other people's project photos and I didn't see anybody else who had done it this way and it made me a little bit disappointed where I was like I don't know if that's what I want I want it to look like the blanket that I had seen in all the project photos and in the um, the sample photos from Melanie Berg so I was just a little bit com conflicted and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do I'm still not totally sure what I want to do um, what I do know that I want to do is I don't want to buy yarn right now uh, but I don't have enough yarn to do in one color to do outside like I think it was six rows of garter around each block and then do the it, it's crochet connecting on all of the blocks um i don't have a single yarn right now that is that many because it's recommended for three skeins in the pattern for for all of that so i wasn't sure what to do and i'm still not totally sure what to do so once i realized that i put it down and I'm still debating with myself what to do. So if you have suggestions, leave me a comment. I need some ideas of what other people would do in my situation. Um, if you would just go to the edge in the color from the club 
or if you would seek out another fingering weight yarn to do the last, the border and the connecting, let me know because I don't know what to do. My decision making skills right now are um, abysmal. I can't make any of my own decisions right now. I'm just so overwhelmed from moving still. My brain can't process it. So I haven't done anything with it once I started it. Um, which is great. It's really fueling me well. I want to do so many different things right now and my brain doesn't have the capacity to do any of them and it's really struggling so I want to like I just have that project and the next one that I'm going to show you ongoing right now um, but so I want to do like pull out start the 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 I want to pull out and start a new big project, but starting a project right now sounds like so much brain capacity and so much decision making and just the process of familiarizing myself with the pattern and starting something and swatching. It sounds awful. So I haven't done any of it and I'm just kind of like off here in la la land, not sure what to do having a struggle bus of a time. So anyways, I actually did end up starting a project yesterday. And um, because this was a project that I could handle starting, I started a vanilla shorty sock. And look at how cute this is. So I did uh, 15 rows on the cuff with this black yarn and then 10 rows in the main color and then went into my heel and now I'm already on the foot. I started this yesterday and I did all of this in like four hours. How great is Shorty Socks? And this is the yarn that I'm using. Some really fun rainbows for June, which is Pride Month. So this is Happy Toes from Hobby in the color 04. So that's why I'm doing shorties, because I only have one 50 gram skein of this, and the cuff and the toe will be in this black, which is also from Hobby. I think it's their rainbow fingering in just the color black. And I did the heel in this, because I, I have enough to do a heel. Um, so this is where I was at so far, and I can handle just casting on a stockinette project that I don't have to think about. Vanilla socks are so easy. You don't have to think about them, you just do them. And I deviated a little bit from what I normally do. I typically like a two by two cuff. I did a one by one this time, just because I want it to be a little bit tighter, a little bit more cinched um, around my ankle than I needed around my calf. My ankle is a little bit, a lot bit skinnier compared to my calf. I have, even though I haven't danced in 18 years, 18 years, 10 years, um, I still have cancer calves. They're not as strong as they once were, but I still have the appearance of them, which is fantastic. So, yeah, these are cute. These will be done super quick. And the next color up. I don't think you can see it, um, but the next color up is purple. It has this white stripe in between each color. It's cute. I thought it would be fun to do some, some rainbow socks for Pride Month. Um, I'm personally not queer, but I have a lot of friends uh, who are, and I really want to, like, anything I can do to love and support them. So, those ones are for me, but I've got another rainbow sock yarn that I will be knitting for a queer friend. So that'll be a good gift later on this month once I finish these. Um, and I'm keeping these ones for myself because this yarn is a little bit more rustic. It's much more wooly and 
I don't know how many non-knitters would appreciate this and I know especially the person who I'll be knitting this for, the other pair for, has sensory issues. So I figured, you know, I'll give them the softer, the, the much softer yarn <laughs> and it's fine. I personally only need, I was going to say I personally only need one pair of rainbow socks. I think that's a lie. I think I need a bunch of rainbow socks because a self striping is so much fun and b rainbows are so cheery and I love having brightly colored socks and my ugly 70s colors on the rest of my body and I don't care if they don't match so uh, that's all I have for works in progress I have two acquisitions that's right, only two and a whole month off. I was only gonna have one, but um, I had mail arrive today uh, for my May Fangirl Fibers Disney Park Club arrived. So uh, here's a spoiler warning. If you don't want to see it, skip ahead a couple seconds, 30 seconds, whatever. I'm about to show it. It just got here in the mail today. Not many. I don't know how many other people have gotten theirs yet, but here is the G May, May, uh, Disney Parks Club from Fangirl Fibers, right here, and I love this color. If I had money right now, I would absolutely buy a sweater's quantity in this color. This is Pirates of the Caribbean, which is such a good ride, but this is probably my favorite color from the club so far. This is the first one where I would say this is a me color. Love a good rusty red and then little bits of ugly brown in there too. I'm excited to use this but I have to get through the rest of the club first. So the other acquisition that I have is from before I moved, actually the weekend that I moved, was the Puget Sound Yarn Shop Tour. And um, I only had the opportunity to go to three shops plus one more that was outside of the Yarn Shop Tour. Uh, it was another local shop that wasn't participating, but uh, I had a gift card too, so I ended up going anyways. So I went to three shops and there was 20 shops participating in the tour. There's this many, like you see all these squares, those are all shops that were participating. I only got the opportunity to go to three of them, which was Acorn Street Shop uh, in the U District in Seattle. Seattle Yarn, which is in West Seattle, which is very close to Alki Beach of the Alki Shawl fame. Um, and the Fiber Gallery, which is in the Greenwood neighborhood of Seattle. And it has this this yarn shop tour has shops all over western washington and the peninsula um and last year i got to go to every single shop on the tour this year because i was moving i was only able to do a couple of hours which is why i was only able to go out and do four shops in one day i needed to get home and start moving so I didn't end up buying anything at the three shops on the tour. I just started walking around and looking at everything in them and I was like, I don't want anything. I don't feel like buying yarn right now. But the last shop that I went to, I had the gift card too. So I was like, I have to buy something here. And I started looking around and there was a bunch. It, this was, this is called, um, the yarn shop is called Tea Cozy Yarn. It's in Ballard which is the neighborhood that I was living in, in Seattle. And they have a lot of yarns that are from Europe. So I was like, okay, I know I'll be able to find something that I really want there. I started looking around and there were some yarns that I started picking up. I was like, I love this, I want this. And then I looked down and they have this beautiful bookshelf case where all of the yarn is held. And then um, about waist high, they have a actual bookshelf where they have books laid out in front of the yarn and I saw a book sitting there that I have wanted for months since it came out 
This is salt and timber and it's from the northern coast. It's a very loud truck um, by Lindsay Fowler. And I started flipping through it and I was like, mm hmm, this actually is what I want to buy. I just dropped my receipt, that's fine. Um, I want to make every single pattern in this book. We got this cute little textured beanie. Show you a couple of, of things here. This is called the Set Adrift Shawl. And the photography in this book is absolutely beautiful. It's all inspired by the Pacific Northwest, all the patterns in here, which I am a big inspired by the Pacific Northwest girly. This is the Lighthouse Shop Pullover, and I'm obsessed with this one. Or Lighthouse Keeper Pullover. I think it's so cute. I want to make this shawl so bad. This is, this is called the Cape Lookout Shawl. And it's a triangular shawl. And half of it is done in one color of Surrey and the other half is done with another color of Surrey. Beautiful. So I want to make every single thing in this book. And at some point I will. But we'll get to it. I'm excited to make it at some point here. So that's all I've got for yarny stuff today. Um, life been chaos really has been chaos um, all we've really been doing is moving uh, trying to relocate and find all of our stuff and it's been hard um, is what it is but we don't have much to, I don't have much to say that I've been doing past that um, yeah, it's nice where we live here. It's really beautiful. Like, I'll twist the camera. Oh, maybe. I'll show a clip here at the end of the view looking out off the deck. There's horses and mountains. It's nice. It's relaxing, which has been desperately needed because the situation that we were in previously previously was adding a lot of stress onto our lives and so we're just kind of sticking it out and trying to figure out what we're doing that's so cute um my fiance just got home from helping my dad with some of his work and he's walking around the backyard and yesterday he found a hole that has a little frog inside. And he just came back outside to come say hi and then he got home and he went and looked at the hole again and the frog is still there. So that's very cute. But yeah, there's not much going on. So I'll just wrap up here. Oh, you know what I have been doing the last two weeks though? I've been reading a lot. I said that in my last episode that I wasn't knitting a lot, but I was reading a lot and that kind of took over my time instead. So I've still been reading a lot and it's been nice. Um, I read, finally, after so many people have been recommending it forever, uh, the Akatar series. And yeah, I'm obsessed now. It's great. It's really kind of reminded me how much I love fantasy. So any fantasy recs, <laughs> leave them down below. Um, and that's all I've got going on. So, um, normally at the end of my episodes, I talk about goals and what goals I had in the last two weeks and what goals I have for the next two weeks. So the goal that I had set for myself in the last episode was just to breathe and get through the hard time. And I did. And I feel like I can say that I, I accomplished that. And... For the next two weeks, um, my goal is simply to, A, number one, uh, not lose it when I can't find any of our daily use items still two weeks after we've moved. Um, and my second goal is to get the Salish Sea Tank 
graded and tech edited and ready for testing by the next episode. Hope I can get it done. I'm really hoping I can. Um, my fiance is really great at math and he helped me grade my last pattern, uh, garment pattern that I still haven't put out because I finished grading it in December and it wouldn't have been ready. It was a worsted weight, huge cardigan. And by the time it was tested and ready to go, it wouldn't have been out until like May, March or April and it just didn't seem right to me. So we're gonna put it out for testing this summer so it can come out in the fall. So I'm hoping that he'll help me again with grading numbers are hard I I went to art school I didn't go to math school we'll see but those are my two goals to not freak out when I can't find daily items and to get the tank top fixed and edited and ready for testing so that's it for me today I hope you all have a good rest of your day and uh, comment down below if you would like to win a copy of the Succulent Socks pattern. And I'll see you guys in two weeks. Bye.